Survival of the Sickest is a book by Dr. Sharon Molem. He wrote this book to question the ideas of Darwin and natural selection. Molem suggests that rather than rejecting the bad genes and preserving all that are good, natural selection uses disease to determine the fittest, an evolutionary aspect. One of the topics that Dr. Molem covers is hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis is a hereditary disease that interrupts the way the body metabolizes iron. Even though the body has plenty of iron, this disease causes the cells to think that there is an iron deficiency, leading to an overproduction of iron and blood clotting. Although this sounds bad, it prevents bacteria from surviving within the body, which ultimately prevents other, possibly more harmful diseases. One third of American children are overweight. That's 25 million kids. Some people blame the fast food restaurants and the junk food that children consume. But what most people don't know is the dietary habits of their grandparents play a crucial factor in their obesity. Especially noticeable today, the grandparents are probably part of the baby boom generation. The U.S. had a lot of food available and the grandparents lived generally more comfortable lives. This made an imprint on their genes and can be seen in the generation today. The same applies if the grandparents lived in poor conditions with little food available. The grandkids' generation would tend to be a lot skinnier. At CHU, also known as autosomal dominance compelling helioophthalmic outburst syndrome, is a disorder that causes uncontrolled sneezing when exposed to the light after being in the dark. This was helpful way back when our ancestors lived in caves, so this reflex helped them to clean out any molds or microbes in their noses. But today, it can be very dangerous. For example, someone driving through a dark tunnel and being suddenly exposed to bright light once they drive out can cause death. Are you Asian? If you are, then you might notice that your parents' faces turn bright red when they drink alcohol. This is because many Asians have a genetic variation known as ALDH2, which causes them to produce a less powerful form of acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Because of this, it's hard for them to convert acetaldehyde into acetate, making alcohol very toxic to them. We can see this as nature's gift in this quote-unquote resistance against alcohol. Clover, sweet potato, and soy all belong to a group of plants that contain a class of chemicals called phytoestrogens. When animals, including us humans, eat too much of a plant containing this chemical, it affects their reproductive capability. Although plants offer a source of birth control, they're also extremely poisonous, which can paralyze, sterilize, or make us go crazy. These plants are also bitter, and an evolutionary reason for that is to prevent plant grazers from eating them. Over time, we have developed the ability to taste bitterness in order to detect these toxins and hopefully stop eating them. Have you ever eaten so much food but still didn't feel full? Well, you might have a parasite living in you, just something to consider. There are so many types of parasites that give you different types of painful outcomes. This is because they use your body mainly for one purpose, to reproduce and ultimately survive. For example, the guinea worm, once in your body, can make its way to the surface of your skin, causing a painful blister. However, this condition will only worsen in unsanitary environments. In places with clean water, studies show that viruses evolved downward in virulence and killed fewer people. This suggests that over time, we can learn to live and coincide with parasites. So, is Dr. Mullen right? Can disease really promote longevity? Maybe disease isn't that bad after all. It's just Mother Nature's way of allowing the human race to continue existing. The ultimate question is, Will you survive?